Okay, so on to the next one. So we got a 57 European Carmen Guillain and uh, we're gonna do body work, metal repair, paint job, you know, typical stuff. So let's take a look at this thing and see what we got. So story on this car, one owner, well now second owner, but uh, it's been parked since the 80s. I guess it was rear-ended pulling into the lady's driveway. Her husband was driving it. It's had some work, you know, I'll show you under here, it's welded. See, there's been some welding there. Not bad for a 57, but, you know, rivets and, hell, this one's even got straight out of the kitchen. Aluminum foil. Uh, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. There's some rust going over here as well. Not bad. Pretty clean nose for a Kia. This car is gonna go back to this tan, I believe it's. Oh. Prairie Bray, Prairie, ah, God, I can't speak that. Prairie Beige, I believe is what it's called. This one, you know, same kind of story. I don't remember if this one showed welding on the underside. Customer wants to strip. He wants the car stripped, wheel wells and everything, doesn't want it blasted. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and what I generally do, especially on something like this, I mean, you can see the bare metal. You can come over here and flake that off. So the most efficient thing is I get some super clean degreaser and I'll soak the whole thing and then I'll blast it with a pressure washer. Especially this little crappy brown lacquer primer that you always see. Nothing likes to stick to that. It's just not very good at all. So, I'm gonna take this out here in a minute and get it blasted. This, this is all crunched in. So guy got rear-ended and let's just push this car forward. There, that'll work. You can get a little better look at it. You can see pushed in up and it kind of rolls up at an angle this way. The back end's got a pretty good twist like this in it. And then if you get down low, it should come in here. It's got a bit of a twist here where you see this angle right here versus this one, there's a, a bow twist in it. And this side more so, I mean, it's got stuff under here. You know, it got popped pretty good. So it's got a bunch of stuff going on. And then in the wheel wheel on this side, you can definitely see the impact right here where it's all buckled. All this. So we're gonna have to pull that back out. But it's got some heater channel rust. The guy that owns it thinks it was because the lady dirt, drove on a dirt road and it was parked with all the dirt. You can see here. Somebody's been in here getting started. But the inside, not bad at all. It'll clean up good. All the original upholstery. I mean, check out the headliner. It's stained, but it's all there. So we're going to try to leave all this alone i think i'm just gonna polish all of this i think i mean me personally i would leave a little bit of the wear and tear just because it just kind of leaves that time capsule you know respray the outside but just leave the inside alone and then because it's been bumped these cars are real bad about twisting where the beetles will take a hit really well 
and it'll just kind of stay in one area, you know, like you can punch the hell out of the front of them and it'll just stay, you know, from the gas tank area forward. It's not really going to transfer back and unless you just nailed it, I mean, just ridiculously hard. These cars, on the other hand, they don't take nothing. You can see the gap here. Fall it on down and look how tight it gets. I mean, just telltale signs. As soon as they start getting bumped, start looking for them being twisted. You know, look at where the doors meet up. If they're bowed out at the bottom. Just, that's just how these gears are. It's got some issues here and there. We'll get into that more in a little bit. I just wanted to get a quick overview of it before I go out and blast it, because I have a feeling when I hit this thing with the pressure washer, it's gonna blast a ton of paint off. Same story on this side. This one's got, I mean, typical driver's side is gonna have more wear than the other. Check out all the service tags and such. I mean, I appreciate this kind of stuff. I think it's cool, you know, so I would leave it. A little history of the car. I mean, anybody can blast one of these and do every nut and bolt and it's all fresh and new, but you lose, in my opinion, you lose the history of it a bit and uh, it's just not the same. All right, let's get this thing out there, degrease it and pressure wash it. All right, well, it didn't blow off as much paint as I anticipated, which is good because then that means that whoever did this paint job actually prepped it. So, got the emblems off, things like that. Uh, found some more rust. All right, stick finger in there. I mean, it, both sides are that way. It's gonna need headlight buckets, but uh, definitely cleaned up where it needed to be and it's always better in my opinion you know everybody's got their own opinion about stuff of course but it's always better just to pressure wash the hell out of these things before you get started you get all that dirt and grime out of all the cracks crevices whatever you want to call them so and then it's a lot nicer when you're you know you're working in these wheel wells and all that mess it's less crap falling in your face so somebody sprayed some undercoating and then lots of like tar driving on the road. But at least the rest of this doesn't appear to have, you know, it hadn't been undercoated. So less to strip there. So just far cleaner. All right, I'm gonna set this thing up and we're gonna strip this puppy down. All right, 
So, custom handiwork here. I ground the heads of the rivets off and it's already starting to lift. I'm not sure if you can tell in the time lapse or not, but I mean, it is dang near as thick as my finger. Filler. And all this is just wavy and hit. It's got a pretty good sized crease all up in here and here. And you can see all this mess down here. More rivets, weld, tons of filler. So it's like, this is a piece and they got another piece under here and all that good stuff. All right, so I wanted to bring you guys back in here. Now, remember this was a one owner car and it's been off the road since, I, don't, I believe the guy said in the 80s. But this thing is beat. And it's one of those things where, like if you take a picture of it or you know, even here on camera, it's not gonna pick up just how bad it is. And you get into a section like this that seems fine, no real evidence, you know, you can like see some bare metal here and there. And stuff like this will just pop up. 
rotted through. Seems to be kind of all over. So I'm just keeping going. Basically, you can see here, this is going to be my line. I'm going to go all the way around the car from here down and just uncover everything. Because, I mean, here, got a hole through, patched up. I mean, patches here, patches everywhere. And I ain't exaggerating. Out of this quarter and that quarter, they had to have put at least five, six gallons of filler. I mean, we're talking thick. I mean, check this out. See if I can kind of get a get it to where you can see. Look how thick that is. And that's not even the thickest places. That's kind of the average right there. And then it's like a whole bunch of people did it because like this one's welded in. And then on this side, it's brazed in. It is just whooped. The guy thought it had just been hit on this side, you know, rear-ended. And it had been hit that side, that side, the front. I mean, you name it. And then rust, like this patch here. There's rust up in here. When I pressure washed it, another reason I like to do that is it'll blast up any, you know, like soft metal and things. It'll blast through. So this is all rotted behind here. It's just everywhere. And it is wavy. I mean, real wavy. All of this. It's all wavy. Like... I don't know if that'll pick it up. Try to make it where you can. That's minimal. Come on this side. Let's see if I can try to get a. And it gets worse. It's not that it's not repairable. It's just another one of those things where you're. I'm sure he was thinking this car was way nicer than it is, especially being one owner parked for so long and all that. Front's wavy. You know, it's all been hit here. Saw the patch there. This is actually one of the better places in the whole car that I've stripped anyway. You know, who only knows what all this is going to turn into, as well as down here with their custom patchwork. And the other thing is, is, because this thing has been hit so many times in the rear, I can only imagine what it's going to fit up like when I put the deck lid on. So, I can repair it all. We'll see if the guy wants to follow through. But, until I strip the rest of this mess out, you can't really make a call on it. Because, I mean, look at this door. Door seems like it's going to be alright, but... Well, if we get in there and start finding this, you know what I mean? It's better just to uncover it all and have a definite idea of where you're going. Because there's places like this where you just go, oh, yeah. And this car's had three, maybe four paint jobs. It had body work over the original tan. So, well, there was under and over it. And then between the two layers of the green, so there's for sure two green paint jobs. And maybe not a complete repaint of this, but definitely repaired in several areas. So I don't think he anticipated that either. Just one of those things, kind of keep it in mind. And who knows what that looks like under there. These cars all have their hidden issues. Sometimes you get lucky and find a real sweet one when they're stripped to metal. But more often than not, this is what you get, especially when it comes to Carmen Gias. Unlike the bugs, you know, nothing unbolts other than doors, hood, deck lid. And still, cheap car. They were driven. You're going to get the crap beat out of them. And the sad thing is, is unlike if you had a Camaro or Firebird or Mustang, whatever, where you could go buy the whole quarters, nobody makes the whole quarter. So, especially back then... There was only so many options and the cars weren't valuable. So it is what it is. But uh, it's definitely a lot rougher 
than I feel was anticipated. No surprise to me. I mean, I, I well, somewhat. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't figure on all that, but I'm not shocked. You know, I've been doing this too long to see too much of this. This is common. All right, let's dig back in and see what else we find. All right, so you can see that's all sand. Sand and like acorn and walnut shells or whatever the heck they are, just shells and crap everywhere I blew out. I popped this repair piece off. Looks lovely, I mean, this is just smoked. It's just thin. But yeah, I stuck the air hose up in here and blew it both ways and just blasting out. This one, as soon as I popped the cover, this was packed solid. All the sand and everything. Some of it blew out because it's going all the way out, but what a mess. But I mean, crazy amounts of sand come out of there. that's going to do it for this video uh, stay tuned for the restoration on this one and I know a lot of you out there are wondering where's the next video on the 59 convertible well I am too really <laughs> um, waiting for some stuff to move got several things for sale and uh, that way I can buy all the rest of the stuff that I need for it and just go to town on it uh, the time running out quick before the show, so in the meantime, I've been trying to catch up on this kind of work because I'm feeling like, and this is how it usually goes for me, is it's going to come down to the wire and I'm just going to have to thrash non-stop to get it together to get it to the show. So i uh, kind of preparing for that, so a lot of little jobs and stuff that's not really worth filming. Um, 
been working on all that, trying to get everything caught up so that as soon as I can and I get all the stuff here, I can, you know, hit pause on all these things and just hammer that car out. So I have some of the stuff already in and uh, just a little bit more to go. Anyway, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. Everybody who has, I really appreciate it. Thanks for all the comments and uh, I'll see you on the next one.